Hey folks, today we're going to create a Pokedex web app and I'm gonna see how fast I can do it while still explaining all of these steps as I go. So we're going to use as our starting point the NX recipe that we highlighted in our video from yesterday. I'll be sure to give you a link to that at the end of the video. But for now, let's just get right into it. I'm going to start by going into our API here. What I actually want to do is add a route for getting our Pokemon. So we'll add a Pokemon router here. So we'll say Pokemon and we'll do a router. So let's start by adding a endpoint here to say get Pokemon. And the idea for this get Pokemon endpoint is we're going to provide an ID. And from that, we should be able to get enough data to visualize the Pokemon. So because we want to get information, we're going to use a public procedure from TRPC and use the query method on here. But because we'll want to provide an ID, so the target ID for the Pokemon we're going to want, we're going to want to add an input over here as well. And here's where Zod comes into play. We're going to give this a Zod schema that's going to describe our input. So I'm actually going to open up a terminal here and we'll run npm add Zod real quick. And then inside of this input, I hope this isn't a premature optimization, but I want to be able to handle both strings and numbers. So we're going to say z.coerce this into a number. So this way we should be able to accept either a number or a string as input and then pass this over to our query. So inside of our query, we'll have an async function here. And from that parameter, we'll destructure out the input. We can see this input should be a number, exactly. And this is because of the Zod schema that we had given right here inside of our input. Now inside of here, I'm gonna say our Pokemon is going to be what we get when we await our fetch Pokemon function here, given an input. And then when this is done, we'll return that Pokemon. Now I haven't implemented this fetch Pokemon function yet. Right now that's just gonna be a black box. And to help us fill out that black box, we're going to use this Poke API. So I believe this API has a way of getting a target Pokemon. I believe, I don't remember Ditto's number. Let's just go with Pikachu's. I know Pikachu's 25. So if we do a get request at this URL, we should get all of Pikachu's information. So I'm going to actually copy this. And since it's a get request, I'll just hit it with our browser. I'm going to copy all of this. I'm going to spin fit this into a pika2.json file, uh, mainly just because I want to format it here inside of VS Code, because there's a lot of things that I don't think I want to show inside of our Pokedex. So I'm just going to trim this JSON down to pretty much just the pieces that I'll want to show inside of our actual app. All right, so now that I have some example output from the API, I'm going to create a Zod schema for the shape of this data, and in particular, just the pieces of it I care about. So I've already kind of trimmed down things over here inside of the JSON file on the right-hand side. I think we'll trim that even a little bit more. So I'm gonna fast forward a little bit while we create that schema, but essentially we're just using Zod to describe the shape of that data. So cool, I think that's it for our schema. I'm gonna collapse this, export type, well, this Pokemon is z.in for type of Pokemon schema. And now if we create a constant foo, assign it to an object literal, but we say this is a Pokemon, uh, we should have gotten a red there. I wonder, yeah, I think we're seeing that issue where if you don't have strict mode turned on, Zod's just going to mark everything as optional. So let's jump into our TS config and we'll make sure here that strict is true. Okay, now we've gotten rid of those optional types. So let me clear out the right-hand side of the screen. And here I actually want to create an assertion function real quick. All right, so there we go. So what this is going to do is assert that any data we pass in is a Pokemon. Otherwise, we should expect it to error out. And now I think we're finally ready to create this fetch Pokemon function. So here I'll instantiate that function. And it looks like Copilot knows where we're going with this. Cool. I think we're all set for both the Zod and the TRPC parts. Let me just go ahead and export this Pokemon type from our index.ts file, uh, just to make sure if we want to import it explicitly into our web app, we'll be able to. All right, there we go. Um, I might as well get rid of the Pikachu JSON file. So we'll delete that. And let's get into Next13 and React Server components. This is where things should be getting fun. 
All right, so coming into our web app here, we have our home page right here. I'm not gonna mess with that yet. I'm actually going to start by just adding a dynamic route. So we're using the Next13 app router, create a new folder, and we're going to give it this brackets ID. So this is like saying there's a slug here. And this is so we don't have to create an explicit page for you know the Pokemon at ID 1, the Pokemon at ID 2, the Pokemon ID 3, so on and so forth. We just want to create this ID, and that's going to handle any possible ID for us. So inside of this ID directory, we'll create a new file. This is going to be a page.tsx. And here we're going to export a default async function for our Pokemon page. We need to get that ID from that slug out via the parameters. I believe that looks like params and then the name of our slug. So ID, cool. So this is actually the destructuring up here. This is actually the type information right here. I always hate the way that works. If you've got a better way of doing that, let me know. But at least this way we can just reference the ID here when it's time to do so. But now, since this is a React server component, it's async, so we can actually just await. We'll await our API. This is where that killer TRPC typing comes in. Pokemon, well, it uh, looks like Copilot's taken away a lot of the fun stuff, but at least we can do that. Oh, uh, we're getting some red stuff here. This is actually very helpful because I probably would have done that on accident without it. But I believe we just need a number here. So um, I believe this z.coerce didn't do exactly what I wanted it to. I was hoping it would make it so our git Pokemon, the input for that git Pokemon would accept both of a number or a string and then coerce it into a number by the time it got into our query. It looks like the typing's not sufficient enough to handle that, but I'm not stressed about it. We'll just throw a plus in here to coerce this to a number right here. Not a big deal. Uh, and we'll say constant Pokemon equals that. Now, because of the typing we had done before, we have good typing for what that Pokemon actually looks like, which will come in handy because now we're going to return some TSX. So I'll wrap it in a div. Uh, we'll put like an H1. Yeah, Copilot knows where we're going. Image looks right, but I don't want this image. To use the image tag supported by the next framework. Uh, let's throw their type next. Uh, we'll throw it in an H2. So that looks good. Let's drop our stats in next. So here, let's just follow Copilot, see where it's going. I think it's going to the right place. And there we go. It looks like Prettier is working, so I, I think we may have something here. Let's go ahead and open a terminal. So here I'll run NX serve web app. This is going to start up a development server. Uh, we should be able to see now if we go to uh, our home page. Oh, we actually hit an unhandled runtime error. Now this isn't anything we did aside from, it looks like we'll need to add the domain where our images are stored into our next config. So let's do that real quick. I think we can just jump into our next config. And here, is there like image, images, domains looks right. Uh, unsplash, I don't think that's right. Let's just copy it. This host name I think is what we'll need to drop in there. And I think cause we just touched our next config, we'll need to restart the dev serve. So I'm just gonna do that here real quick. All right, and let's try that route again. Well, it does it look pretty, but we're not looking for pretty, we're looking for done. <laughs> so I'm gonna be happy with this for now. I do wanna include at the bottom here though, some links to the next and previous Pokemon. And we'll just throw this in under our stats for now. But here we'll just check to make sure our Pokemon isn't at ID one, because in that case we won't have a previous. And it looks like it's trying to use an anchor here. Let's instead use a link. So we'll make sure routing works a little better. Um, instead of just saying previous, Let's not just say previous, let's actually put a image here. Well, actually let's say previous, but let's put like a uh, image for like what the previous one would be underneath previous. So we'll say image here. And here I'm gonna just dump the URL that we'll kind of know our sprite's gonna be at, but we're going to determine what that ID.png is going to be based off the Pokemon ID. So we'll say Pokemon ID minus one. So this way we'll have a previous Pokemon. I'm just gonna copy and we'll paste this in. Uh, but I think that looks good. Actually, I think href is actually wrong. It's ChatGPT did this originally, but looking at the route, it wants to put Pokemon in front, but we didn't do that. We just put it right at the ID. So I'm gonna get rid of Pokemon in both cases. And yeah, let's see if that worked. Okay, so there's Bulbasaur. If we scroll down, there's Ivysaur. Click in, we go into next. Yeah, that looks right. But yeah, again, uh, some formatting issues here. I'm not gonna worry about that for the video. I think this is fine. 
One thing though, if I had our terminal open, we would have seen these scrolling as we go, but we can see sort of in the logs here, uh, as we go to each page, we're actually server side rendering these lazily. So by lazy, I mean like we're just not building that page until a user actually requests it. But because we know there's a predetermined set of Pokemon IDs that could exist, we might as well just go ahead and server side generate all of the pages really quick instead. So let's do that. And I just found out how to do this yesterday with Next13 and the app router. So instead of get static paths, uh, that's how you would do it in previous versions of Next. We actually export a function with a special name, generate static params. So Copilot actually wants us to hit a route that doesn't exist right now on our API to get all of the Pokemon from our backend and to then just map over them. Uh, we're not going to do that. Let's just instead, we'll say constant IDs. We'll say four, let I equals one to 151. We'll just push that on there. I don't think we need params in here, contrary to what Copilot thinks. I think this was the case for get static paths. I don't think this is the page for get static params, but we'll find out. But we do want to make sure that this is a string because I believe next will not like that if it comes in as a number. So we just have a very simple function here to create an array of all the possible IDs. And we just know this logically. But if we want to do a network request to get this, Next also supports an async function here. And we could do like a network call here to maybe check our CDN to get any recent data and server side generate all of that if we wanted to. But for us, this, this should work great. So I'll hit a save on this. If we open up the terminal, well, I thought we'd see sort of all those pages getting generated. But maybe we only see that when we do a prod build. So let's create a new terminal. And here I'm going to run NX build web app. All right, so now we're saying generating static pages. This is kind of what I expected to see. Uh, interestingly, I didn't expect 154. I've expected like 152. But maybe it knows something we don't. But yeah, let's take a look at the terminal output. So there's our home route. And we can see our home route is static. And then all of our Pokemon here at the dynamic ID are SSG'd. So this is static HTML plus some JSON that gets passed over. Oh, I guess the 404 gets created for us automatically. So that might make sense. Maybe that's how we got to the higher number than I was expecting. But yeah, that about did it for our Pokedex. Uh, one last thing I wanted to do was maybe just adjust the homepage a little bit. Probably just put all of the original sprites there on the homepage. We'll jump into the page.tsx file here. So this is our home page currently. Let's just go to it in the browser here too. So this was our original message we got from the boilerplate. Let's just jump into that. So let's just say, welcome to Pokedex. And as soon as we hit a save on that and come back to it. Oh, I wonder if it's cached. Let's do a non-cache. There we go. Non-cached refresh will give us the right message. But now coming back to that page, we'll just drop another div here, I guess. Uh, before we do that though, let's just come up here and we'll say constant IDs. Same thing we had done before. I know there's a more declarative way of doing this, but for loops in general, I think are the way to go, at least when creating an array. I think when you start doing something like, I don't even remember what it would be. It's like new array, like 151, but then you have to like fill it with zeros and then you have to map it to yeah by the time you get here i'm just i'm not interested anymore this makes sense to me i think a lot of people would guess this a lot quicker so we're going to use that so inside of our divs we're going to yep copilot knows where we're going it wants us to put a div here i'm actually going to change this to a link so we can just use it as a link to each pokemon's page cool and then inside of the link we're just going to do an image and cool let's see how that looks Okay, <laughs> I think it works. This is this is too broken though. It just kind of like drops us in the middle. Let's fix this up a little bit. Uh, let's just try, if we just drop these down to 25, how does that look? Well, it's not exactly the best responsive experience I've ever had, but it's functional. So we can come over here to Dodrio and we can see on the thumbnail. But I think that qualifies as a fully functional Pokedex now. So I'm satisfied. In particular, I think this collection of tools actually really helps to supercharge the abilities for speed and kind of putting something together quickly that works. It gives you a really solid base for iterating and making it better over time. And maybe an interesting observation here is, I don't really know how much we need a TRPC, at least for this example. 
because we're using React server components, like it doesn't hurt that we have like this built-in client that gives us like good discoverability on all the different routes and all the different endpoints that are available. But really, I think if we go back to our TRPC code, we could probably get rid of this entirely and instead just like export now this fetch Pokemon function. If we make sure that gets exported from the library too, I think we might as well just import fetch Pokemon directly. And honestly, I think that works just as well. Maybe the only thing that's missing from this approach is by importing that API that we had before, we don't have like a map to all of the different methods we have available to us. We kind of have to remember what they are and start typing them in order for like IntelliSense to kick in and our IDE to be able to like auto import it for us. But I'm pretty sure that works just as well as before. So really cool to mess around in a very simple way with React server components in particular with this example. And of course, nice to see how NX can give you some tooling to kind of help you iterate after you've created a starting point like this with your next app. So thanks y'all so much for watching. Hit the like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Keep working hard. We'll see y'all next time. Peace.